Hollywood. It's a town like any other town. There may be a few more pretty girls because of the pull of motion picture studios, but otherwise, just another American town. Overcrowded, too much traffic, a main street full of the same kind of sucker traps, and men of every possible assortment. Honest men, fools, clergymen, businessmen, tramps. And this is Steve Randall, who knows Hollywood like the palm of his hand. For Steve Randall, in his own way, is a composite of Hollywood. He's seen everything a man can see anywhere, and has been disillusioned by most of it. And he belongs in Hollywood, for its fame and its so-called glamour are magnets for the money-hungry riffraff of the outside world. And they bring their greed to Steve Randall's town, and greed's companion is trouble. And that's fine for Steve Randall, for trouble is his business. with S.O. Extra Gasoline. The gasoline that stops cold weather stalling. Fill up with S.O. Extra and go! Hollywood Freeway. <laughs> Freeway in the eye, the quickest way to get to jail. Yeah, I wonder what the D.A. wants from me now, right? He's opening address to the jury, huh? and all that for three dollar witness money now hold it randall the trial isn't until tomorrow you're not on the city payroll yet this is for free so why not take it easy take the advice of the chamber of commerce enjoy this evening a reinstatement order to the bar got to do with the Carlton case. Everything. If I get a conviction, you get that. But I need your help to get a conviction. And I thought the DA wasn't giving away something for nothing. Now, what's the gimmick? I thought you had a good case. Not bad. If Eve Fraser testified. Well, why shouldn't she? Because she's still in love with the accused, Andrew Carlton. Well, so what? She'll be under oath. A hostile witness isn't good enough. Randall, she's holding something back. And I need everything that I can get in a circumstantial case like this. She speaks very highly of you. Yeah. Make her talk and you'll be a lawyer again. Is it a deal? It's a deal. You better take your phone off the hook and get to work on that opening speech for the jury. I'll see you in court. A crime for which the state asks that you bring back a verdict of guilty. Order, order in the court. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason that we are here today. To decide the fate of Andrew Carlton who sits before you accused of the dreadful crime of murder. A crime for which the state asks that you bring back a verdict of guilty. Thank you, Your Honor. Is the prosecution ready to present its witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. For his witness for the prosecution, Stephen Randall. Will Stephen Randall please take a stand? All right, Randall. See if you can do better with your testimony than you did with Eve Fraser last night. Look, I'm not through with you, Fraser. I told you I'd get her to talk, and I will. When? After the trial? <clears throat> Raise your right hand. Tell me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth will help you, God. I do. Please be seated. Will you state your name and occupation, please? Stephen Randall, private investigator. Mr. Randall, by whom were you employed in this case? By Mr. Wells. He was the lawyer who Jim Bender hired to represent him. Will you uh, tell the court who Jim Bender is? 
Well, he was a close friend of the deceased and the man who inherited his estate. That is, when it was discovered that old man Carlton had an estate. I think you'd better clarify that, Mr. Randall. Well, perhaps it would be better if I told you about my first interview with Mr. Bender when Mr. Wells sent me down there to see him. Very well. Jim Bender was still living in an old shack on Skid Row where Ed Carlton had lived. When I arrived, he was talking to a young lady, whom I later discovered to be Eve Fraser. She left Rana hurriedly when I came in, and he seemed a little anxious over the abrupt departure of the girl, but Bender took me into his flat. He offered me a seat and sat out himself. Won't you come in, sir? I'm sure you didn't come here just to see a house where half a million dollars was found. My name is Randall, Mr. Bender. I'm working for your lawyer. That means I'm working for you. Is there going to be trouble about the will, sir? Well, I don't blame you for being concerned about it. There's a lot of money at stake. I've lived so long without money, sir, that it doesn't worry me. Well, then why are you so anxious about the will? I thought the fact that it was written on such unconventional material might make it worthless. <laughs> yeah, well, unconventional is certainly the word for a will that was written on a piece of a woman's slip. But that's not the problem. And what is, sir? How much do you know about a holographic will, Mr. Bender? A what? Were you uh, with old man Carlton when he made it out? I'm sorry to say I wasn't here when old Ed died, but Eve was. That would be Eve Fraser. Um, the two of you were living here with? Eve had the room across the hall, sir. Old Ed was very kind to both of us. Did you both know that he had all that money hidden here? I did. I've been a long time with old Ed. He was only here a few months. I doubt if she knew. But she was with him when he died. I mean, she saw him make out the will. It was a piece of her slip it was written on. When I came back too late, she gave it to me and, and I brought it to Mr. Wells. That's the whole story. When will the girl be back? I don't know, sir. She well, left after old Ed died. But you know where to contact her? No, sir, I do not. Well, that's odd, isn't it? Why? Well, a man worth a half a million dollars dies and the only material witness disappears. Even the police might be curious about that. I don't see why, sir. What did the police say about his death? Nothing. Everyone assumed it was his heart. Now, when a man dies without a doctor in attendance, Mr. Bender, the police don't usually assume. They perform an autopsy and find out. A half a million dollars is a lot of money. But I didn't know he was going to leave me the money. I wasn't even here. Yes? Which one of you is Jim Bender? That's my name, officer. You want it down at headquarters for questioning. What do you want to question him about, officer? I'm working for his lawyer. Oh, ain't that interesting. He may need a lawyer. We did an autopsy on his friend that left him all the money. Seems he was on a bad diet. Arsenic. You're gonna need Miss Fraser for more than to prove that will, Mr. Bender. You'll need her to save your neck. As it turned out, I was right. The police performed an autopsy and found arsenic. I was interested in protecting old Mr. Bender. That meant I had to locate Eve Fraser. I was also interested in talking to the only living relative of Mr. Carlton, his nephew, Andrew Carlton. Objection! The witness's interests are irrelevant. But my interest was a fact. Aren't facts relevant in this court? Objection overruled. Continue your examination. Mr. Randall, why were you interested in Andrew Carlton? At that point, I was interested in anybody who might be connected with the murder of the old man. Will you please tell the court the circumstances of your first encounter with the defendant, Andrew Carlton? When I finally did locate him, it was at a place called the Black Top Hat. Morning, line six, race in front. 
272-7. When I walked into the place, he was leaning against the bar. He was perfectly friendly at first, continued to place bets while he was talking. Hey, Mr. Carlton. Can I do something for you? My name's Randall. I'm working for Jim Bender's lawyer. Jim Bender. Oh, yes. He's a little old man my uncle gave all his money to. For that peculiar will. Peculiar, but valid, Mr. Carlton. Well, I think that's a matter for the lawyers. If it is valid, there isn't much I can do about it. Is there? Frank. Yeah. How did Lou Rush do? You ran out, Andy. <laughs> and I uh, was too late to get down on him. This was my lucky day. I broke even. Have you seen your uncle lately? Not for some months. I looked him up when I first came to the coast. We didn't have much in common. Did you know he was worth half a million dollars? If you mean that I expect to inherit anything, the answer is no. But you were his only living relative. I didn't expect he'd have anything left by the time he died. He was an awful sucker for a hard luck story. Pretty tough standing by and watching him give it away, huh? With his man? Say, Chuck, you know, this ain't just the place they're coming out of the cold. This is a place of business here. Sorry. You know a good horse? I understand you're an expert. Well, if you're willing to risk that much, try um, Black Lady in the 8th at Florida. Frank! Yeah. 20 to win on Black Lady for me. And for my friend there, two dollars on the nose. Paper costs money, friend. Thanks. You were about to tell me what brought you here. Yeah, there's been a new development. The police performed an autopsy in your uncle, and they found at least two dollars worth of arsenic. I can't believe it. They're holding Jim Bender for questioning. Are you trying to tell me that that old man killed my uncle? Well, I imagine the police will try to prove just that, Mr. Carlton. And unless I can find a missing witness, they got a pretty good chance. Well, that would be this Fraser one. Eve Fraser, I think her name was. If Carlton had killed his uncle, I knew what I was about to say would put Eve Fraser in a dangerous position. But I also thought it would force his hand. If she testifies that Bender didn't know about the will, that destroys any motive. It also makes the will valid. So the whole case sort of rests on her. Well, I figured that if anything happened to Miss Fraser as a result of this conversation, I'd be responsible. So I had to find her immediately. And did you find her, Mr. Randall? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. Your Honor, I would like to explain to the court that I'm not proceeding further with the witness, as I intend to bring out the details of his meeting with Miss Fraser when I call Miss Fraser to the stand. Your witness. It's nearly lunchtime, so the court will recess for one hour if the defense has no violent objection. I defer to Your Honor's wishes. Okay, Randall, it's your last chance to make her talk. It's now or never. Okay, it'll be now. Have you changed your mind, Eve? I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Randall. You settled everything last night. You're wrong. You're going to get on that stand and tell them everything you know. Everything, you understand? Why can't you understand, Mr. Randall? I'm not going to send Andy to the gas chamber. Eve, you're a fool. You don't owe him anything. He was going to ditch you as soon as he got the money. As a matter of fact, he had a nice, luscious blonde already in waiting. I don't believe you. Leave me alone. Please, leave me alone. Looks like your last chance to be a lawyer again just ran down that aisle. That's what you think. You'll get your testimony and you'll get it cheap. It'll cost you exactly one dime for a telephone call. I'll send you a bill for it. 
Miss Fraser, will you please tell the court what happened when Mr. Randall finally found you? Please, Miss Fraser, the court is waiting. Please, Miss Fraser, tell the court. Well, I, I'm surprised to see Mr. Randall. I, I didn't think anybody knew where I was. When, when Mr. Randall came to my place, he, he told me who he was, and I, I let him in. Then he, he asked me if I was E. Fraser, and I said yes. You don't deny that you're E. Fraser. There's no reason to deny. It. Well, what are you hiding for? I'm not hiding now. There's no need to. Jim's going to get the money. It's all set. Murder doesn't settle anything, Miss Fraser. Not a thing. What are you saying? Answer me. What are you talking about? The old man was murdered. And the police are holding Jim Bender. Oh, he wouldn't do a thing like that. He loved him. We both did. Well, somebody killed him. And there's not a very large group to choose from. I don't understand. Maybe you should have asked your friend Andy Carlton when you called him just now. He might have been able to explain it. How do you know I called him? Look, Miss Fraser, we haven't got very much time. Why don't you tell me the truth? I'll tell you nothing. Better me than the police. What do you want to know? Why Carlton sent you down to make friends with his uncle? You weren't down and out. It's a sense you didn't turn up at the old man's shack by accident. Look, we haven't done anything wrong. Andy was afraid he was going to give away all his money, that there wouldn't be anything left to inherit. So he sent you down there to stop it. Well, you certainly did that. I had nothing to do with his death. He was good to me. He was good to everybody. I fell in love with those two old men. I wasn't going to stay after I got to know them. It was his money. He had the right to give it away if he wanted to. But conveniently, he died before he could give it away. But I didn't want the money, not anymore. Would I have given the will to Jim Bender then? Andy would have that money now if I hadn't done that. Well, that's strange sort of reasoning, isn't it? I don't see why. Because Andy still gets the money if you're not available as a witness. Is that why you went into hiding? I, I didn't know about that. I thought it was all settled. Well, you know it now. Look. I went away after I gave the will to Jim Bender so that Andy couldn't do anything about it. I thought that once it was in the hands of a lawyer, it was all right. I thought that, that maybe we could start all over again. Forget about the money. Start from scratch. Is that what you told him on the phone just now? Yes. Little Eva, you're an idiot. Why didn't you just invite him over to kill you? That's what it amounts to. I'm trying to frighten me. I'm not afraid of Andy. He won't hurt me. He killed his uncle. You're the only thing that stands between him and that money. With you out of the way, the will isn't valid, and Jim Bender stays in jail. Don't you see that? No, no, I don't believe it. I'll never believe it. You won't have that much time. He'll be here in a second. He'll be here now, except he couldn't drag himself away from a horse race. Look, I've told you I'm not afraid of him. I love him, and he loves me. It has to be Andy. It couldn't be anybody else. Well, you don't have to believe me, kid. I'm going to give you a chance to see for yourself. See for myself? When he comes, you make believe you're alone. You're trying to trap him. I won't have any part. If he's not guilty, the trap's not going to hurt him.
of him, weren't you? From the beginning. Yes. Yes, I was always afraid. Yes, I... I have been afraid. Terribly afraid. Your Honor, I object. The only charge for which my client is on trial is the murder of Edward Carlson. His alleged attack on Eve Fraser is completely immaterial at this time. It is by no means immaterial. This man, who already had blood on his hands, was prepared to strike again when he was... When he was... the district attorney must resort to cheap melodramatics... Hello, you, gentlemen. It is for the court to decide what is evidence. And in the opinion of the court, the testimony of the attempt on the life of the witness is germane to this case, intending to show the motivation of the defendant. But, Your Honor... That will do, Counselor. You may continue your examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Stop! Are you ready to go on with the case, Counselor? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Fraser, just why were you so afraid of the defendant? I... I don't know. Miss Fraser, I don't think you're being honest with the court now. Isn't it a fact that you were afraid of the defendant because of some knowledge that you possessed? Knowledge that proved to you beyond a doubt that Andrew Carlton killed his uncle? No, no. Miss Fraser, this man tried to kill you. Surely you're not going to protect him further. I tell you... Order in the car. Counselor, as soon as your new witness has made herself comfortable, would you kindly proceed with the case? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Fraser, what motive... I had no motive, not anymore. I'll tell you everything. Yes, I knew that Andy Carlton killed his uncle. I was afraid to admit it, but I saw him coming out of the shack the morning that it was poisoned. Nobody else knew he was there but me. Order in the court. Hi. Ever behind ketchup? Well, here's what happened to me last week. Ta -dum -tum -tum, ta -dum -tum -tum. You know it's good because it's Heinz. <coughs> I don't blame those two men for taking their tomato ketchup so seriously. The deliciously different flavor of Heinz tomato ketchup is the tangy good partner for fish, for chops, for french fries, for that good old-fashioned stew, for any and every meat dish that wants a zesty flavor lift. And Heinz tomato ketchup is a great flavor boon for the homemaker who prides herself in her cooking. So always keep two bottles on hand, one for the table, one for cooking, both for that deliciously different flavor. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will the defendant rise and face the jury? The clerk will please read the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Andrew Carlton, guilty of murder in the first degree. <laughs> well, congratulations again, Counselor. I still don't know why Eve Fraser broke. <laughs> How did you do it? Professional secret. I'll take that now. Uh, Mr. Randall. Hmm? Didn't you forget something? What? Oh, oh yeah, sure. All right. No, uh, 
Well, just what was it that I did? Don't you worry your pretty head about it. Steve Randall, attorney at law. No more doing all the dirty work for every lawyer in town. <laughs> now, at last, you'll be doing the dirty work exclusively for yourself. Thank you.